Apple's emergency SOS via satellite feature is now available in Australia and New Zealand, but I'm not sure why they sent me to be one of the first people to try it out. Look, back in the day, I'd be a person that wouldn't get lost off the beaten track, and I'm proud of that. I was a scout, or a girl guide, or whatever you want to call them. See, these days as a tech reviewer, I'm pretty happy to stay cozy with all my creature comforts inside. So when I went out looking for satellites to figure out what's going on with this new emergency SOS feature, well, probably wasn't looking in the right place. <laughs> If you're watching this video, I assume you know a little bit about the emergency SOS via satellite feature, but essentially the models of Apple's iPhone 14s all now have the ability to communicate with satellites. But this feature only comes into play if you need to get in touch with emergency services and you don't have any cellular reception and you're in a supported region of Apple's new satellite service. Now this could potentially be a life-saving feature and it's a pretty good value add to the latest models of iPhones, but I still have a lot of questions about it. But luckily they invited me to have a one-on-one -on -one with Ronak from Apple so I could ask all the questions I had. They're far away, right? I've never personally communicated with a satellite, but how, how far away are they generally? These satellites are located over 1,300 kilometers away and they're moving at a speed of approximately 25,000 kilometers per hour. So you can imagine it was pretty complicated to figure out how to get a reliable connection between an iPhone that's resting in your hand here on Earth and these orbiting satellites up in space. Uh, the team had to tackle a whole new set of technical challenges to actually bring the service to life. But, you know, we thought satellite connectivity was a really important way to extend our existing set of safety capabilities. You guys sell a lot of iPhones, so how many satellites we got up there? Is there enough so everyone can get their emergency message across? It's pretty crazy. Yeah, totally. So when an iPhone 14 user sends a message using emergency SOS via satellite, it's received by one of 24 satellites up in space. Now, like you said, we needed to ensure that the satellite network could handle the level of volume that iPhone would bring. So we built a bunch of infrastructure to ensure that we have uh, sufficient network capacity to deliver the service uh, to expected hotspots, both you know in every day, as well as peak times, like a natural disaster. Interesting. And are they Apple satellites? Like, whose satellites are up there? Who, who are we beaming to? What we chose to do is we chose to connect to an already flying satellite constellation that's owned by Global Star, who's been providing satellite communication services for decades. These satellites utilize frequencies that have established regulatory approval for use between satellites and mobile devices such as iPhone. What happens when you need to make an emergency SOS via satellite? Here's how it works. If a user is unable to call emergency services because you know they're outside of mobile or Wi-Fi coverage. Emergency SOS via satellite can get them the help they need. So after attempting a call, a new option called emergency text via satellite will automatically appear. And with a few simple taps, users can answer a questionnaire that best describes their emergency situation. That was a great explanation. But personally, as a visual learner, I find it easier to just see it IRL. And I got to do that one of the worst ever days for it. So essentially, I tried to make an emergency call to triple zero here in Australia, and of course, no answer. I was in a place with no reception. And then the iPhone suggested I use emergency text via satellite. Once you tap on that, you press the green button that says report emergency, and then it starts to run you through a questionnaire. It's pretty simple and applicable to a ton of different situations. I said I was lost and I need help. I wasn't injured, but there was steep terrain. And then it asked if I wanted to notify my emergency contacts. Then I was immediately being connected with a satellite. You'll notice I'm trying to find the satellite because you do need to hold your iPhone in line with one to keep the best reception, but you don't actually need to hold it into the air like this. And I was told if you can't hold the phone, it will still work with the phone lying on the ground if you are injured. Now, once that initial info is beamed up to the satellite, you'll get a response back from the Apple Relay team. Essentially, they were asking more information about my location and if there was any other information I could or wanted to provide. They'll message you back and forth as much as you need and they'll let you know when help's on the way. This was actually pretty cool. I was out in the world testing this feature 
IRL speaking or communicating with real live satellites. Oh my gosh, she's widowy doing the gwitty at the satellite demo thingy. So you've got your message sent up to the satellite and someone's responding to you uh, and letting you know they're gonna send help your way. But who's reading those messages and sending help to you? We designed the service to work within the existing emergency services infrastructure. Public safety answering points or PSAPs um, aren't able to handle text in Australia. So we put in place relay centers where Apple trained agents receive the text messages, they're coming from users, and then they make a call to the PSAPs on the user's behalf to get them the help that they need. You know, the emergency relay centers, they play a crucial part in making all of this work. And critically, they make it all work within the existing emergency services infrastructure that's in place in Australia and New Zealand. The people that are receiving the messages, these relay center specialists, they're highly trained um, and efficient. They're trained by Apple to be able to receive this information and make sure that people get the help that they need. That's really cool. Like new jobs helping people. I love that. But a bit of a change of pace. I have a Fun little uh, satellite joke for you, just to lighten the mood. An iPhone 14 married a satellite. The ceremony wasn't much, but the reception was great. <laughs> I love it. I'm gonna have to <laughs> use that one myself. It's good, you should use it in your presentations. I, I have like some more uh, satellite jokes, but they may go over your head, so. But we'll okay. continue with the serious <laughs> questions. <laughs> like, are you worried that Bear Grylls will send you a cease and desist <laughs> Apple now that no one can technically get lost. I mean, unless you don't have an iPhone 14 or 14 Pro, in which case, good luck. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Well, I mean, some of the most popular places to travel are off the beaten path, especially in a country like Australia, right? Where it's estimated that approximately two thirds of the land lacks cellular coverage. And so Emergency SOS, it provides a tool for people to get help when they're off the grid. And our team has worked um, nonstop to bring the service to life. So. We hope it's going to provide our customers some peace of mind when they're out there. And I bet Bear would approve. So this service reminded me to one, probably renew my first aid certificate so I can look after myself or others in an emergency. And two, that the iPhone actually has a lot of helpful medical and emergency features built in. If you didn't already know the iPhone has a section called medical ID, I cannot stress enough how awesome it is and how helpful it can be when you're in an emergency. Essentially, it's a space we can fill out all the important information about you and your medical needs. For example, if you're a diabetic and emergency services or anyone are able to access this even when your phone is locked, as long as you enable it. Then first responders or family and friends will be able to view your medical ID from the lock screen of your iPhone by swiping up or pressing the home button depending on your iPhone model, then tapping emergency on the passcode screen and then tapping medical ID. Regardless of the satellite feature, that is life changing on its own and I hope everyone like learns this, please pass that knowledge on. Additionally, on your iPhone, you can nominate emergency contacts and I highly recommend you do this. And there's a feature on iPhone where you can set off an emergency alarm or alert. On an iPhone without a home button, you hold down the power button and the volume up button. And then if you just keep holding it down, it'll start calling emergency services and making a siren. That's a really great safety feature and emergency alert feature. If I'd let that continue, my phone would have called emergency services and notified my emergency contacts that I need help. Is it correct that you can set up a demo of the satellite SOS if you have an iPhone 14 or 14 Pro in a supported region? Yeah, so this is really cool. So even though we made the experience as simple as possible, we really wanted to give users a way to try the feature before they actually needed it. And so we built this demo mode that allows you to try out the service without actually contacting emergency services. What's really cool is the demo mode actually lets you connect to real satellites. So make sure to try it outdoors. Now try it, just check out emergency SOS and settings and tap the try demo button um, to give it a shot. Well, that's essentially emergency SOS via satellite wrapped along with some other emergency features on iPhone. And I really hope you enjoyed checking out this video. If you like what I do, I'm on TikTok and Insta on the short form game and doing a little bit of YouTube. So thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Please leave your feedback in the comments and subscribe for more. And hopefully I will see you next time. Bye-bye.